to my channel, welcome if you are new. Today we are going to be doing my April wrap up. And I didn't read as many books as I wanted to in April. I felt like I'd read more than I did. <laughs> but then when I look back at my vlogs and think about what I actually sat down and read, I'm not surprised that I didn't read that much. So, I'm just going to quickly go through my statistics, statistics with you. Mmm. I still read 60 hours of audio, I don't know how the hell that happened, but I read a total of 4,717 pages and that totaled 12 books and I DNF'd none in April. Might not be the same stats in May but we'll see, we'll see. So I'm going to start with my lowest rated books and work my way up. I had two 3 stars, two 3.5 two four and six five stars first we had sort of mercy and wrath this by nc kusis sorry if i pronounced that wrong this was a three star for me it this is a debut book by an indie author and it was good i don't know how to say this. i don't even see, you could tell it's like a debut book um some of the writing in places is a little bit clunky um i wasn't a massive fan of one of the plot lines but it is generally well written and the world and the characters are all very interesting and it kept me intrigued and I would want to read the next book that comes out just to see how the story progresses but yeah that that's that, that I don't really want to say much more than that I don't really know what else to say and then the next three star I'm really disappointed with this one <sighs> Queen of Myth and Monsters by Scarlett Sinclair. Again, the same with King of Battle and Blood. This might be a case of having to go back and reread these at a later date. But this follows Adrian and Isolde, which and it's like a sequel to the first book. And in the first book we get a little bit of a mystery about the backstory and a bit about why Adrian seems so interested in Isolde from like the offset. But in this book, I wanted them to conquer the world together sort of thing. I wanted it to be them battling against the people that are trying to kill them. And we found out what their backstory was a bit about it in the first book. And I wanted to hear more about that. And I wanted to... And Adrian's not a good guy. He's the king of all vampires. <laughs> and he... And she's his, she's his wife now, so, and that's not a spoiler, that is literally on the blur with the first book. The kind of characters that you shouldn't really want to root for, like good versus evil kind of thing, but because we see things from their perspectives, it kind of endears you to them a bit, and I really, really wanted to root for these guys, and even if they weren't the nicest people in general, and they weren't the good guys, I was hoping that at least for each other they would be good if that makes sense but I didn't like the way Adrian treated her in this I didn't like the way things progressed with their relationship I didn't see the 100% the point of the way that he was acting and I might read book three if and when it comes out just to like see as if, if book three is the last book just to see how the story ends potentially but I was really, really disappointed and it's such a pretty book as well, so meh. And then the next one is a three and a half star, I think. This is Stormcrow. This is by Kaylin Josephson. This is an arc that I was given by Catherine when she was doing an all a while ago and I did enjoy this, but... The storyline was a tad predictable and I, I shouldn't, I, I should have expected it going into YA but it didn't go the way that I was hoping it would go and it, yeah it did seem kind of predictable and the main character is okay but she just, it's just very okay. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to get rid of this because it's an arc and you can't sell them but I'm, I'm if you're interested in this giving it a go let me know and I'll post it to you 
it's not a bad book, it is well written. Some of the character development is good, but I just felt like something missing that really endeared me to the characters and made me want to root for the characters. I'm a very, very character driven person, I still need a bit of a plot, but if you don't give me something in those characters that makes me really want them to have something good, then you lose me and it kind of did lose me a little bit. Sorry. And the next one I read audibly and that was Small Miracles by Olivia Atwater. This was the Spiff But 8 book. It's actually one Spiff But 8 and personally wasn't my favourite. I would have chosen other ones I've read. It would have been uh, 13th Hour by True Skies or it would have been Tiago Dallas A Touch of Light. But, you know, that's where you get a range of panellists. And it was it was interesting, it was good, it was a story about um, a fallen angel who is <laughs> she is given a task to get somebody to sin and I don't mean big sins it's like getting to see some chocolate or getting her to swear something things like that and it's a cozy fantasy and it is very up my street it's just that <clears throat> I don't know what it was it was it was just just short of the five star for me, I think, because I don't know if I'm un being unrealistic in comparing it to <laughs> like Legends on Lattes, but it was it was still really good. I really loved the characters and the relationships, the found family vibes, the actual romantic relationship that like comes to fruition throughout the whole thing. It's it's great. I do love a good like I love love, I love romance, so yeah, it was really nice, but just a little bit short of five for me. And then the other four stars was Mrs. Covington's This Is by K.I.R. Lockhaven, and this was such a cute, another cosy fantasy. I can't believe I had two in one month, but this follows a young man who wants to break away from his family and goes on a journey to find himself, and comes across this little town and then there's like this little pub restaurant type thing this like a tavern in this town and the, <laughs> the logo on the placard outside is a capybara and she's called Mrs Covington and the the great thing about this that I just felt was such a unique perspective was that not all the time but now and again you'd get a little like chapter from Mrs Covington's perspective and when I say chapter I mean a couple of pages but she's just adorable it is like little things like silly things like she's plodding around in the garden or she's taking a little paddle in the pond down in the back garden it's just really silly things but it just makes it that much more cosy and it's just <sighs> the vibes the vibes I devoured this book. It was so good, and um, the only the only thing that didn't get it a five for me was just the writing was a little bit clunky in parts. Um, there were some over over explanations in some parts. I can't even form a sentence right now. Some of the sentence construction and flow in a hundred percent go well together if that makes sense that that doesn't make sense i make no sense yeah that's that's all i can think of. that's not the only thing that held it back for me which is i would have liked the writing to flow a little bit better but yeah we're then coming on to the five stars so first up we have blue exorcist volume four do i need to tell you what this is about if you've watched Gemma's channel you'll have heard all about this but this is about a boy called Rinokamura who finds out he is the son of Satan and when he wields a specific sword he is pointed tail out you know rawr power of Satan it's great but I have because I have watched a series of this like both series one and two and the anime and I know that it did that diverges on a slightly different trajectory than the manga I think that this is a point it's coming up to where it slightly differs because this is coming up to like the end of season one I think. I'm interested to see how this differs from the series because the series got a bit confusing. 
it went a bit back and forth and timeline wise but I'm I'm so excited to continue this I do only have book book I do only have volume five after this I need to get the rest so I can like binge a couple of manga and then we read we read our dark duet the tabbage the tabbage the tabbage was real the emotion was real I cried V Schwab has me in a chokehold and I just I can't not love what she writes the only thing what did I give four stars to I don't know what I've given four stars to if I'm, all, if, if I'm honest I know the name which got four stars from me and I can't remember if there's anything else that got a four but this definitely got a five and that duet and this savage song five stars and I cannot wait to get the special edition of this this follows a boy called August who you know, might possibly be a monster and a human called Kate who might have monstrous tendencies. And it does have a good conversation throughout the Georgia about your physical attributes doesn't necessarily dictate what you are inside. And that whole conversation is just one that we generally need in today's society as well not gonna lie i think one of the reasons i do love it so much is because it does address that just because you may look like a monster doesn't mean that you are one very poignant in places very cute in places <sighs> made me angry in others made me want to bash people's heads together at times because they were both being stubborn little shits but i can kind of understand where those are coming from as well so yes august is a bean who needs to be protected at all costs and Kate is very misunderstood and she's great. We vibe, we move, we move. One that I read near the end of the month, Gallant, also by V. Schwab. I should have read Our Dad Duet the month before, can you tell that I was a bit behind on my um, live show reads? But once again, this book, Chef's Kiss. Give it five stars first time, give it five stars second time. There were little bits about this that I forgot happened, which is, I'm really, really glad that I had a reread of this. And I'm so glad we're doing this Schwabble of a Ding Dong. I forget that Olivia, Olivia Pryor, this follows Olivia Pryor, who is orphaned. And then she gets a letter that says, like, come to Gallant. But then there's a mystery behind Gallant. What really has gone on there? Yeah, there's, there's a whole story. I don't want to give you too much. The eeriness that... Schwab injects into this book it really does um, it, it might be that I also believe in ghosts that can make it a that little bit more eerie and sort of like prickles on the back of your neck kind of vibe but it, I, for, I forget genuinely that Olivia can't talk Olivia is mute and she signs to communicate or she attempts to sign to some people who just don't know how to sign and that aggravated me but I could kind of understand why they don't sign and it makes sense in the grand scheme of things and you'll understand if you've read it but because you are so invested in Olivia and her story and you want the best for this little girl and the way that she communicates is like so animated and it might just be the way that the story is told and the way that she can get her message across but she doesn't speak and it's I, I totally forgot even though that's like a massive thing throughout this whole book I totally forgot that that was a thing. When I started rereading this, and I was like, "Shit, she is mute." If if you read it, you understand what I mean. It's I don't know how Shaw does it, but I need that talent to be injected into more books and released ASAP Rocky. Thank you. And then we have another reread, and it's Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. And oh my god. Again, I did forget bits about this book. I will be hopefully going to Night Shadow in June now. I don't think I'm going to have time in May. Kest, Braster, Falkio. This band of not so merry men. The personality differentials between them. Differentials might not be the right word to use, but the difference in personalities. But how they all work well together. The difference in skill that they have. Um, Kest is how to, how to describe Kest. He's very pragmatic and he will, he, he says it how it is and if he thinks they're not going to win a fight, he will just say like, mm, not the likelihood that we're going to get out of here alive is maybe like 20% but you know, nice knowing you. And he, he's like, 
nothing phases him. But also he does care deeply about Brasty and Falco, even though Brasty is a cheeky little son of a bitch and winds kissed up all the time and Falcio and Brasty is just like this cheesy little woman lover and he's adorable and Falcio's just got um, a secret sitting on a secret well he's hinted that he might have a secret or he's got something that I don't fully understand Falcio's backstory we get bits and bats of Falcio's backstory and his motivations for doing what he's doing and basically if you don't know what this is about the king has died. These three were like part of a large group of people that were hired by the king called the Great Coats. And um, he has given them all, I can't remember what they have to call it, but he's given them all a task to do that they needed to fulfil and then he ended up being killed. And Falco is determined to hold his promise to the king to do what the king's asked him to do. I could understand why he's why he does what he does but like the the twists in the plot for this didn't see didn't see one of these coming and jesus christ it just throws a spanner in the works and near the end near the oh god i was on ten to hooks again at the end because again i forgot that this bit happened maybe it's just because it was traumatizing and i blocked it out of my brain but i highly recommend you read this if you don't already know, hi, I'm Lisa. I am trash for DeCasto. I will just rep any book that he brings out. Malevolent 7 is coming in the post. Boop, 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 boop. And then, and then, and then, and then, again near the end of the month, Aurora Rising by J. Christopher Amy Kaufman. Sobbage. Sobbage is a word that I am saying right now. I thought I was doing so well getting through all this book, and I'm like, yeah, sad bits. Bits that made me angry, bits that confused me, bits that were just like, ooh, what's going on here? And then, and then, near the end, it was just like, ooh, ouch. My heart is a beating organ that needs life to be pushed through it and it's currently being strangled. Um, I don't know what, what's going on in, going to go on in book two and three. I'm very, very scared to continue this series. So if you, again, I'm not doing very well at explaining what these are. So this follows a group of people that, um, mainly follows Tyler to start with, who is like the alpha and has a plan set out for himself. And he, on, on the day that they're supposed to choose who their crew are, he ends up being stuck out on a spaceship, Seven Aurora, from, a thing. He misses out on picking the best crew that he wants and he gets stuck with people that he thinks are like the worst. I mean, he's got a twin sister who chose to be with him and he's got a best friend who chose to be with him but then the rest of his crew are just thrust upon him as like the ones that the other guys didn't want and he was gutted that he didn't get to pick first because obviously he was like the, the best in his graduating class. And he was supposed to be like the one that got to the pick of the best bunch, but I tell you, I tell you for, I tell you for now, the variety of people in this book and the personalities give me a ragtag group of people with some like totally contracted personalities, but put them together and make them work. Give me the banter, give me the angst, give me all the emotions rolled up into a ball and shoved in a book, and it's this. So we've got like sibling love, we've got found family vibes, we've got slight bit of romance and just attraction in general. Um, we've got a sarcastic character, we've got a very straight laced sort of, I don't know how to describe him, Cal. I'll just call him what, I called him as a space Legolas and I'm very intrigued about Mr Space Legolas. There's a, there's a guy called Finn who just makes me laugh. Again, a five star read for me, for a J. Kristoff book. I've not read any more of Amy Kaufman, but there's that. I've totally missed that book. I've totally missed that book. So the other 3.5 was Finley Donovan is Killing It. I enjoyed this book. If you want something that's just very campy and goofy and doesn't take itself too seriously, but you want a fun little mystery that was, it's kind of like a cosy 
a cosy murder mystery. Not a mystery, it's not even a mystery. A cosy, not even a thriller, I don't know, a cosy book that's kind of thriller-esque but kind of also turns into a little bit of a murder mystery and for reasons which, yeah, if you want to find out exactly what's going on then you can listen to the podcast, me, Andy and Jem discuss this at length. Um, but I did really enjoy it but it, it was missing a few things for me. There was a certain characters that I didn't particularly like and certain plot lines that like just there was a plot line that literally or a character that just cut off for no reason. It sort of didn't make sense. So there were certain things that didn't make sense about the book and I don't know I don't know where I've done I don't actually know what I've done with the book. But yeah. Um it was it was interesting. I am intrigued to find out what happens in book two but I'm not rushing to pick it up. The next five star is Jade Legacy. This whole series, the Green Moon Saga, was a five star of a series for me. Oh my god, this ending, I was also in tears. At this point, I'm surprised I have any more capability in me to cry. The amount I cried in March and the amount I cried at this lot in April, I don't know how I have the capacity to still cry, but I do. So, you know, I I, I don't I don't know, guys. I, do, I just don't know what's going on with my brain. But, um... I can't really tell you much about Jade Legacy other than I finished it, it's a great series. I really would love to get the hardbacks of the books. The likelihood that that's going to happen unless they decide to bring out like an anniversary edition at some point for the series is very unlikely. But um, I'm so... Cheers, kiss. Finally, 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 The Iron Crown. Because my other books for the read-along slash book clubs were all pushed back from March and I didn't finish them in time. That meant they ran into April. Meant I had to put this down for a short period of time. But once I got this, once this bad boy was picked back up, I just devoured it. This follows a guy called Fen, who wakes up in a place he doesn't know. He literally doesn't know anything. He knows his name and that's it. And then he comes into contact immediately, almost, with a spirit dragon. A dragon spirit. Like, this just there. And he's confused about what's going on. And then he meets Kalindra and Giselle, and they go on a journey. And this is not very well explained, because I don't want to spoil things for you. But Fen is such an intriguing character. I would really need to know why he can't remember... We find out bits about why he can't remember and there's theories ruminating around but we don't know for sure exactly what's going on with him and Kalindra and Giselle are just like the grumpy sunshine of this whole book. Giselle is like terminally positive for a lot of the time. She has a, she has a moment but for the, for the most part, especially at the beginning of the book, she is like the positive and Kalindra is like the sceptical um, cynical person that's just like, I don't trust you. Um, and for reasons. She has her reasons, not gonna lie. But I was just, I was gripped the whole, the, the world building is just amazing. The character development in this. I 100% love all three of them and I want the best for all of them. And I am scared. That's all I can say. We meet a character called Apollo who I'm still undecided as to whether or not I like him. I think that's the whole point though. He's like done things for reasons. He's kind of morally grey but he's got a, a wife and kid that you just like it all connects and oh the connection as well. Oh my god the connections that that like are woven into this book. It's, so good. One of, once I've got coherent thoughts and feelings and ponderances, I will do a full review on this book. But right now, I'm still very much in in the moment of like, uh, it's amazing. So yeah, that's it for me. That was a really crazy wrap up, but <laughs> I don't know if I got every all my books in there, but we'll see. If you do like me and you want to see more of me, please like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Here, when you want to let me know you're here, but you don't have anything to say, please leave a black heart. It's very much appreciated. And I will see you in the next video.